Hey everyone, I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures. And in this video, we're gonna talk about some of the newest updates, or actually one of the updates that's been out for quite a while that I just haven't covered on Gaia GPS. Now, if this is your first Gaia tutorial video from this channel, uh, do know I have quite a few Gaia tutorial videos uh, that, that I've done in the past. So, some of which are, are still very much um, applicable, uh, even though they may be two years old or, or older. Um, so I'm going to, uh, in this video, just cover some of the updates. I may, I may gloss over or, or, or quickly cover some of the things that I've covered in the past, but for the most part, I'm gonna be covering uh, Gaia GPS's updates. I did a video in January of 2022 called um, Getting Started with Gaia GPS. Uh, in that video, I go through great detail over the web browser interface, the mobile device interface, how I plan routes, uh, downloading maps, all that sort of stuff. From that video, everything I talked about on the web browser, still valid. Uh, very little has changed in the web browser interface in the last two and a half years. Um, it, it was already pretty dialed in, and Gaia has been spending a lot of time on the mobile devices and the mobile device interface. Uh, really having them match the web browser, uh, but just really making the screen much, uh, much, much better visually to the eyes, easier to find things. The user, the user interface on both the phone and the tablet uh, has improved a lot since then. And that information in that old getting started with Guide GPS video is basically outdated now. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to spend a lot of time on the mobile devices, both tablet and phone, because there is a little bit of a difference between the two that I'll show you. And then I want to talk about some of the newest updates uh, that Gaia just released. Um, let's see, it is now September, end of September 2024. Gaia released these updates just a couple weeks ago. And so we're going to cover, cover, cover some of those new features. Uh, so let's, uh, let's dive right in. Let me show you real quickly on the desktop uh, so you can see how this mirrors where to find everything. So just about everything on the desktop is over here in this left-hand corner. And you can see I've got mine just these tiny little icons here. And if you, um, if, if you compare these icons to what you see on the screen of the mobile device, uh, you see the settings, you see the saved, uh, you see the, the layers. If you click in here, you see overlays. So uh, these icons are very, very similar. Same thing here on the tablet. To get to these the same things on the tablet, you can see the layers icon down here at the bottom left. Uh, but you tap on this little arrow key, which is absent on the phone. So all these, um, all these icons here across the bottom to access those on a tablet, you tap this little arrow key down here, and then that brings up the same menu. Uh, so you've got your settings, you've got your saved files, uh, you've got your trip and those sort of things all on the mobile device. So this is where they are on the phone, and this little hidden drawer is where they are on the tablet. There's a lot more screen real estate on the tablet. So instead of uh, taking up a layer of the screen, uh, I like that they put that down there. It, it hides them or brings them active as needed. And when you don't need them, you've got just a nice big screen uh, to look at. So uh, on the desktop here, you've got your, your map overlays. Now this icon does look different on the desktop and the mobile device. Um, but this is where you turn on and off waypoints. You see all my waypoints uh, disappeared. Uh, you see routes disappearing, uh, tracks disappearing. Um, so I can have a completely clear screen just by toggling these on and off. To do that on mobile device, uh, you go here to your, um, to your layers, and then it's here on map overlays uh, within the layers tab. So to get to overlays, which is what this button up here is, uh, you have to go into the layers button on your mobile device, either there or there to get to the overlays on on mobile or, or tablet. So that's the only real big graphical difference between the two um, is where the overlays are found and what it looks like. 
Then going down, you've got your layers tab. This is where you find and turn on and off, change the transparency or the opacity of the different layers that you're using. You can uh, drag layers up and down. Uh, if you want to, you know, I've brought the wildfire layers up. If I want to reorganize things, I can just, with my mouse, drag them around and change the order uh, that I have them there. Went into great detail uh, of this stuff in my other videos. Uh, I actually have an entire video just on the layers because the layers in Gaia GPS is what is really one of the key things that makes it so powerful and sets it far and above the competition uh, as far as tools for remote overland travel, also hiking, mountain biking, kayaking, skiing, whatever. Below that, you have the saved icon, and here you can filter out, you can sort all what type of things that you're looking for in here. Uh, I have a whole video on how to stay organized in Guy GPS as well. I'll link all these down in the description. Uh, but I'm not going to go into great detail of them here because they've all, they're all pretty much the same uh, as far as the, the content goes compared to now. So there's where you change all that sort of stuff. On the mobile device, you go here, your save button is down here at the bottom and click all and that's where you can toggle what you're, what you're searching for in your saved stuff. Uh, same thing here on the phone, it is down here at the bottom, saved toggle that and then that's where you can change from folders to routes or waypoints and then filter out the things that you're, you're that you're looking for uh, from there we've got settings on the the mobile device settings is down here on the bottom um, of each of these menu and that's where you can access all of your settings uh, on the web browser you the only settings you get are what type of you know, do you want metric or imperial and what type of uh, coordinate information you get a lot more settings on the mobile device uh, such as details about your account um, the units appearance map layout controls downloads distance markers compass power saving modes storage all that sort of stuff uh, because none of those features are applicable to your your web browser interface and then these tools over here um, on the, the bottom left that's for creating a waypoint, creating a route, uh, importing uh, GPX files, um, designating areas. Uh, that, that's what all those are for there. Again, all that's covered in my getting started with Guide GPS video, so I'm not going to get into it here. Those same tools are found um, right here with this big plus sign on both the, the phone and the tablet. So you click that big plus sign. Here you get the exact same icons. You get the waypoints, you get the routes, um, you get the areas, and you also have the option to take a photo uh, on your mobile devices. If I click here on the tablet, uh, it's got the exact same ones there. Uh, the photo is super handy because you can take a photo of like, say you find a beautiful campsite while you're out traveling around. You're not gonna stay at it that night, but you wanna save it for later. You can create a waypoint and take a photo uh, and save that photo with the waypoint. So next year when you're in the area or you, or you go back or you want to send it to a friend, they can get a visual or you can get a visual for, you know, what that waypoint looked like, which was, which, which is pretty awesome. A one feature that is found on the phone interface that is um, in a different location on the tablet uh, is right underneath the plus sign here is uh, a search icon. So this is where you bring up the search menu. And if you have self signal, it will, you know, pop up all kinds of stuff that's, uh, that this popular nearby, you can, you know, search for a hiking trail or a place or even an address uh, in the search bar here. Again, you must have some sort of data connection there. Or if someone sends you GPS coordinates, uh, you can, copy those and paste those into Guy GPS and it'll drop a waypoint on the GPS coordinates. So that is uh, down here in the bottom right corner uh, of the phone. On the tablet, it is uh, here in the little uh, arrow. Uh, there's the search button right there and you can, you can bring it up and search and do the exact same things there. The other thing that's a little bit different on the um, on the phone, 
uh, where the tablet has the arrow, the phone has these little four arrows kind of spreading out. If you click those, it will hide that bottom menu uh, so you get the full screen. Click it again, it'll bring it back up. Uh, but that, that takes all the icons off the screen instead of just hiding that menu bar like, uh, like the tablet does. So little subtle differences there if you're flip-flopping back between a phone and a tablet. Uh, just some, a little bit different uh, interface there between the two. Now, Gaia has done a fantastic job of streamlining both the tablet and the, the phone uh, user interfaces. And they're much cleaner now than they used to be. Stuff's much easier to find. It's much more intuitive, I think. And I love how they have kind of changed up this top bar uh, on both the tablet and, and the phone. This is where you can totally customize uh, just important information for you while you are out on your trip. You can see on my, uh, my phone, I've got elevation as one of mine and then distance traveled. So if I'm recording a track, I can just quickly glance at that and see, oh, it's been one mile or it's been 10 miles or, oh my gosh, I've done 100 miles today. And then you've got the, the very big prominent record button to record that track. Uh, same thing on the tablet, but depending on if you're looking at it in landscape mode or um, portrait mode, you'll, you'll get more or less options up there. And all you have to do to change any of this, and you can re reorganize where it is, is just tap on the bar and you get these little rolly menus. And so you can totally customize what information goes where. Um, and then when you're ready to, um, want that to be elevation. Um, then when you're ready to, to, to get out of that, just tap that bar again. Uh, same thing on the phone, you just tap it. You just have fewer choices because the screen's not as wide. So I, I like to keep distance and elevation as mine, but if you want to put uh, sunrise and sunset, you want to make sure you get to camp before, you know, before sunset, uh, that sort of thing. If you want put your average speed or you know coordinates or anything like that, you can you can change it and get whatever you want to, to see. And on the desktop, uh, you don't you're not limited to just the icons here. If you want to see the, the full menu in words, you can click on this uh, little arrow that looks exactly like it does on the tablet. And then you can have just a slightly wider menu here that shows the that shows the names. Uh, so I, I like to have this view. It's just it's just preference. Also in the layers icon, this is where you, like I said, find your overlays, but also this is where you go to save your offline maps. So um, the button for that is in the, the, the layers, which is, makes sense because you're saving the, the layers. Uh, but up there at the top of each, uh, of each layers menu, that's where you save your offline maps. And I went into great detail of saving the offline maps in my uh, full layers video. So if you wanna get into the weeds about all the intricacies of saving offline maps, go watch that video. Now, just a couple weeks ago, Guy released a brand new update, um, huge, a huge update uh, to their mobile apps. And one of the things that that did was bring in a new feature uh, that they're calling their home feed. Now, if you did the update, I, I have seen some uh, some posts and some comments about this online uh, because it threw people. When they did the update, they had to log back in. And when they did, they were met with um, this new home feed. Uh, what that is, is exactly what it sounds like. It's kind of a social media feed built into Guy GPS. So if you want to make posts, you can connect to friends through Gaia GPS now. Um, you can you know, share your activity in Gaia GPS now. You can make posts, share photos, all that sort of stuff. And it will populate here in the home feed. Um, for now, since it's just launched, um, they're, they're gonna be expanding this over time. Uh, you pretty much, or at least I, because I'm not actually following anybody yet. I'm not friends with anybody on Gaia GPS yet. But uh, right now it's just a bunch of articles and posts and stuff by the staff at Backpacker um, Magazine, which is owned by Outside, which owns Guide GPS. So it's kind of a whole ecosystem here uh, of kind of a social news feed. 
Um, there's been mixed reviews. Some, some people like it, some people hate it and don't understand why uh, this is being forced on us. Uh, but the good news is once you have, once you've updated your app and you are shown the home feed, uh, if you just click back over to the map, it, it never defaults to the home feed again. So unless you click on the home button, you don't, you don't ever have to see that again. Um, so, uh, I, I think it has potential to be, uh, to be cool, especially if you've got a, a group of friends or group of people that you follow in different genres and stuff, you can search them out and, you know, friend their profile or follow their profile, however they have it set up, um, and see their activities that they post, share, and not have to like mess with Facebook if you don't want to for those sort of things. So I, I think it has potential as people adopt it and it grows, that sort of thing. Now, one very important thing to note, and this is where I've seen most of the backlash uh, from the home feed, is it does, if you have your account set up to private, which means when you record a track, all that stuff defaults to private and not shared publicly. Uh, when you do the update that has the home feed, Gaia does default you back to the default of public. So let me show you, I'll show you on the tablet, it's the exact same way on the, um, on the phone. But go to your settings and go to your account. And at the very top here under your sink, you see this privacy and default visibility. Click on that. Here's where you can change your profile privacy. If you want a public profile, uh, people can search for you, they can view your profile, they can follow, follow you, they can view your public activities. Um, anyone on the web can search for you and find your profile information. That is your option. If you want to remain private, uh, which is how I have my account set up, uh, select private profile and um, they can still find you, you know, people can still find you in your account, but they have to request to follow you. So it tightens everything down. Um, and if you post something, it will default to being only viewed by you. And then you can go in and, and change those settings and make it visible to, you know, to whatever viewing profile you want. And then here's the secondary, just scroll down, account privacy. So this is where all of your default, where all the tracks that you record, um, all your activities uh, across Gaia GPS and Trail Forks and the outside network, this rechains that default. So uh, it defaults to everyone. So if you are out, you know, on an incredible adventure, you record a track and save it, it becomes part of the public tracks um, toggle, which you can get to by um, going to, excuse me, going to the layers and overlays and you can toggle public tracks on or off there and so if someone has public tracks turned on you go out and do something record a track save it it would show up on on public tracks uh that's an area where most people that, that i know uh overlanders off-roader we tend to like to keep those things a little closer to the vest a little more uh um, a, a little more private than just sharing it to the world because of, you know, campsite sensitivities and all that sort of stuff. We, we, we have reasons. Uh, so here's where you can select it. You know, if you're going to get involved in this whole social network home feed thing here, you can turn it on so only your followers can see those things, uh, which, you know, it, which is, is cool. And you can turn on to where it's only you, um, which is where I have mine defaulted to. But that is, that is it. Now, um, going back to the home feed, uh, I'll show you here on the tablet since I showed you the phone a minute ago. If you want to share something here, you can, boom, share your activity, type it up, add some photos to it, and then you'll see down here, this only you will see it. That's because of my defaults. But I can then change that to let everyone see it or just my followers will see it. Uh, and then post it. Now up here, uh, this is where you can customize your profile. Uh, this is this is on my tablet. This is what I use for all of my 
live trainings at Overland Expos and Rendezvous in the Ozarks and more Expo and um, all those sort of things. So this is where um, this is where I can edit my profile. Um, this is where I can change these privacy settings as, as well. It duplicates it there. Followers and following. This is where I can go to find people if I want to. Um, you can even find brands and stuff, not change your notifications, bookmarks, all those sort of things. So uh, I, I think there's some definite potential here in the home feed. Uh, I think it just caught some people off guard when it first came out. So uh, there's how to use it and there's how to change all your privacy settings and stuff so you can set that up the way you want to. And then uh, one new really cool feature that Gaia released is what's called their device hub. So if you go into your settings and just right down here at the bottom, device hub connection, uh, what this allows you to do, if you have another GPS device, say a, a Garmin, um, you know, that you use maybe while hiking or, or kayaking or, or mountain biking or something, um, or maybe you've got a Fitbit that you use for running, um, you can connect that device there's Connect Garmin, there's Connect Strava, two of the big ones, biggest ones probably. Um, uh, you can connect a bunch of different apps and stuff. So anything, anything else that you're using, maybe not anything, but limited, because I, I can't connect my Apple Watch to it, um, because probably Apple. Uh, but other tools that will record your routes and stuff, Strava for running, got Garmin for other outside activities, you can connect those to Gaia and have them import those tracks um, directly into Gaia, which is awesome because before you'd have to, um, you know, if you wanted your, your Garmin to sync with your Gaia, you'd have to export what you did from Garmin, then import it uh, into Gaia. And now this makes the process a lot more seamless. And I think it's awesome that it works with both hardware devices and uh, other apps and software uh, if, if you're into keeping all that sort of stuff in sync and, you know, want to have all those activities in your Gaia as well, it now has this device connection hub, uh, there. And I, I think that's really cool that, uh, that, that they allow that. Well, I think that covers everything that's been updated since my last few videos. If I missed anything, be sure to let me know in the comments. Um, and, and I'll, try to cover them or I'll help you any way I can. And if you do have questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Um, I, I just think Gaia is such a powerful tool. It does do a lot, which does up the learning curve on, um, you know, on, on the user experience, but it does so much that I think it, it truly is the most powerful tool for offline navigation, off grid, remote, you know, adventures, that sort of thing. So, um, be sure and ask, be sure and post them in the comments. And, you know, if you would give us the YouTube love, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you like what we're doing and um, you want to gain access to special events, uh, special uh, content that we put out, um, I do share all of our GPS data from our trips with our Patreon uh, supporters. And if you want to consider supporting the channel, check out that Patreon link in the description. And for all of our merchandise, shirts, hats, patches, stickers, all that good stuff, go to shopoverlandapparel.com. Thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful. I'll see you next time. Bye.